Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about herbs for your 2020 garden. And if you wait till the end of the video, I do have a little brief garden update I can I can show you. There's not much going on out there, but we, as far as things growing, but we have been working on it and getting some stuff started. And I did want to shoot this outside, but uh, it's threatening to rain any second and it's really cold out there. So it's in here, but that's okay. I'll be putting in lots of pictures so you won't just have to stare at my face. <laughs> okay, so I've got this broken up into categories. And the very first one I wanted to cover is both culinary and antiviral. Because of the situation that we're looking at right now on the global scale, I think it's really important you do your best to get some antiviral herbs in there. And here's the great thing about this. So especially if you're new to starting in a medicinal herb garden, I think these should be the very first herbs you put in because of their multiple benefits. So not only are these herbs that I'm gonna list off here good antiviral herbs? They're also culinary, so you can use them to flavor and season your foods. So here's the list, and by the way, I'm gonna to try to keep this to just four to five herbs per category. There's many, many more out there. I'm just gonna list off what I grow, what I use, plus a few that I use even though I don't grow them. So the top five in this category for me are oregano, and that is both Mediterranean, oregano as well as the golden oregano uh, they have different flavors and both are very useful i think you're going to get your most medicinal benefits out of the mediterranean because it is a hotter oregano but the golden oregano still adds a nice color as well as a, a just a little different flavor to your uh, culinary herbs and then you've got your sage so very excellent plant these uh once you get these plants started these these are all perennial so they'll keep coming back and they can be pretty hardy plants. Uh, thyme is another good one, and rosemary. Now thyme and rosemary can be a little bit finicky. They really don't like being in places where they get really wet. So when you live in a place that gets an average of 120 inches of rain per year, you have to be creative at finding the best spot for them, and I finally did after years of <laughs> of trial and error. And then of course, garlic. Most people can grow garlic. It's an excellent herb. Uh, There's so many good things that you can do with garlic. And I do have that recipe. I'll try to remember to link down below on the honey infused garlic with all the spices added in. So that's gonna make it a really good antiviral, antibacterial, cold and flu prevention type Thing. The next category is going to be for pain. Again, remember these are the herbs that I already grow and use, so I'm very experienced in them. Uh, there are more out there. Any of these categories, if you want to find more that might do better in your area, simply type into your browser. When you're searching for an herb for any particular thing, just simply put best herbs for and then put in the category you're looking for. So in this case, you'd be best herbs for pain, and then you should be able to find several different links that will give you a nice long list of various herbs so you can find which ones that grow wild in your area as well as those that you can grow easily in your own garden. My top choices for this are the valerian, the catnip, and the feverfew. And then along with that is also echinacea. It can also be good for pain. I believe it's in the roots that you're gonna find most of the benefits as far as pain relief go. And then peppermint can have its benefits to help with pain. Usually we think of it as more an aroma thing, but making a good peppermint tea, that's going to be a, an option. Okay, so the next category we're looking at is coughs, colds, flu prevention and cure. So that's kind of all of the above. I'm gonna try to break this down just a little bit more. So uh, for preventing the, the colds and flus, we're looking at elderberries, black elderberries, you know, Sambucus nigra, echinacea, garlic, and then a couple more that I still have not had success growing, but I always stock up in an organic powdered form is ginger and turmeric. And yes, I know, turmeric has two R's in it. I think I'm pronouncing it, but for some reason people aren't hearing it. Maybe it's my accent, but anyway, 
turmeric very excellent herb so i stock up on these i get mine through subscribe and save on amazon either frontier or star west brand i will link down below to the ones i get if you aren't growing them you don't have them i recommend these be a couple of the herbs you stock up on immediately personally or any of these herbs especially things that's cold and flu prevention and antiviral if you can't you don't have time to get your garden garden you're not already growing it you can't grow it then um, buy them in their organic form in bulk i would say go for the one pound you're going to get the best price that's what i always do for the herbs i can't or i'm not growing yet and then the ones that are really good more specifically for coughs would be your anise hyssop which is an it's just a very tasty herb it has a nice lovely licorice flavor and it's a beautiful plant in your garden um, i've been selling some seeds to that on my etsy store for the first time this year and i'm hoping to see a lot of it coming back this year and by the way most of these are perennials not all but most uh, the whorehound is another good one. It's a good expectorant. Uh, anise hyssop is also a good expectorant as well as helping with the coughs. And then marshmallow is really soothing for sore throats and helping to relieve coughs as well. So marshmallow is one of my top favorite herbs that I grow. Moving on to things that are good for healing and promoting good skin health. That's going to be your plantain. This is something that grows wild in most people's gardens. Of course, dandelions are really good. Dandelion flowers in particular. Calendula flowers. Love calendula flowers. You use those a lot. They're also edible. In fact, most of the stuff is edible in some form. Yarrow, comfrey, and lavender. Okay, moving on. I can't spend a lot of time on each one of these, so I'm, uh, if you want to see breakdowns of each of these herbs, I have a whole list of videos that I've done so far in a playlist that I will link down below in the description box. Hit show more or that little gray arrow to open up that box for you, but you can check those out and I will be doing uh, more herb pro profiles this year as well in more in the spring and summer. So the next category I'm gonna cover is digestion. So you'll be hearing some of these herbs that I've listed off already. You'll be hearing them again because they, a lot of these herbs have multi-purpose. In fact, all of your herbs are gonna have more than just one medicinal benefit to it. So anyway, digestion. So dandelion in particular, the leaves and the roots when it comes to that. Feverfew, marshmallow, ginger, and peppermint. So again, ginger's not one that I grow, but I grow all the rest of these. Okay, now let's move on to antibiotics. So another really important one you wanna look at. Again, you'll be hearing me listing some herbs again. So echinacea, nasturtiums. I love nasturtiums. They have, again, I see them as multi-purpose, but the leaves in particular are great for an antibiotic. I've used it successfully for curing uh, ear infections in a couple of family members. Uh, oregano. Here's that ginger again, garlic again, and lavender. All right, for sleep, for helping to induce sleep, for being calming to help relieve anxiety, you've got lavender, valerian, catnip, passion flower, and licorice. Now, I do not grow passion flower or licorice. I've tried with both of these. They don't seem to like it here. I may try again on the licorice. But um, chamomile is also a good one. I've grown it in the past. I haven't grown it in a while, but that's another real good one. It can be calming and help induce sleep. And then another one that can be good for anxiety is borage. We've used it. I've used the leaves fresh in salads, the young leaves. I've dried them up and added them to my, my mixed greens blend. So, and you can make a tea out of those or, or the flowers. And I add the flowers a lot to salad. So I love borage and it's also really good for your bees, especially if you're already keeping bees, this is gonna help uh, from what I've read is gonna help increase their output of honey. But even if you don't have bees, this is a great one to add to your garden to uh, promote bees in your garden. They also do love the anise hyssop, the echinacea, the woolly lambs ear, the, uh, and calendula. They like that quite a bit too. And then of course, dandelions. When the, the dandelions are the first to start flowering, so when you're harvesting those flowers, keep some of the flowers out there for the bees because it's the first thing they're gonna come to, the first thing that blooms usually in the spring. Okay, the next area is for breaks, sprains, and bruises, and I have two. One is comfrey. I've been growing this for quite a few years, and 
than arnica I'm starting that for the first time this year now I did buy some dried arnica last year and used it right away when I broke my toe so I had the dried arnica flowers and then I had the the comfrey leaves and so I made a foot soak out of those very very effective along with some Epsom salts and uh, very effective at healing that break I've broken toes before because of dance and martial arts and that was the the fastest healing broken toe ever ever and I can guarantee it was broken because it was the same toe I broke before in ballet class anyway if you if you're interested in the video I did about the break and the and the foot soak I'll go ahead and link to that down below the last category I wanted to cover was herbs that, that my top three herbs for their versatility and so why I think these are really good ones that you should get in your garden because they have so many uses pretty much all parts of the plants are useful in some way and that's going to be your marshmallow because you can use the flowers and salad they just have a nice very very mild flavor they have a little bit of their own medicinal benefits the leaves have a little bit more medicinal benefits they're also very soothing to the throat but they're they have a nice flavor and they do well in salads you can dry them up and use them in teas you can use them in your homemade uh, infused oil for making your skin cream along with the calendula the lavender and all that and then of course the marshmallow root many great properties again as I listed here for digestion and so on and so forth I did a video recently just on some uses for your marshmallow root that I will also link down below because I started harvesting the marshmallow root from some of my older plants this past winter and I'm still working on some I, I got to dig up and dry but you can also break up those marshmallows after you cut off some of those big chunks of root and use them you can break them up into, into smaller root chunks and put them back in the ground and they'll just take right off again for you so marshmallow is so great once you have it established the first time you will always have it and it will it also does self seed very well as well as being a perennial so then the other one is the echinacea uh, echinacea is just climbing right up to there to being one of my very top favorite herbs right along with the marshmallow because not only is it a beautiful plant it's also you know a bee attractor the leaves are edible and have a, a I think a, a nice it's a rather green ish flavor but it's nicer than maybe the taste of a strawberry leaf strawberry leaves are very green tasting but the echinacea leaf just seems to have a little bit more sweetness to it so and it's very nutritious you can get your medicinal benefits from the leaves the flowers and the roots as well and then again of course you know as I mentioned the echinacea is good for pain it's a great antibiotic and of course we know it's really wonderful at immune boosting so echinacea is not going to cure a cough cold or flu but it will boost your immunities I think even while you're sick if it's a boosting your immunity it's going to strengthen you and help you to get over it quicker but taking it before you get sick is even better yet to prevent you from getting sick so there's just a few reasons why echinacea is just right there at the top of my list of my you know some of my favorite garden herbs so then the third one I've got on here is and this is in no particular order and that is the dandelion so a lot of people know dandelion grows like a weed I let dandelion grow in my garden wherever it wants to come up unless it just gets too crowded then that's when I'll pull up that root put the root to use the leaves to use and the flowers otherwise I let them grow here and there because those roots those long tap roots they're going to feed the plants around it they carry nutrients down into the soil to the surrounding plants i've had some of my biggest beets and my biggest onions growing right next to massively sized uh, dandelions and so i i'm glad i left them in there i mean growing i'm talking right up next to them and they did very well and then the other great thing about the dandelions in your garden is those leaves are going to spread out and they're also going to help shade the soil and help prevent it from drying out so you need less water that's just one of those things that do that so and then of course as i mentioned the leaves the flowers and the roots all have their own uh, medicinal properties and they have very many medicinal properties these are the herbs I recommend you get started in your garden or at least pick from some of those I would start with those those uh, ones I listed first because they're both antiviral and they're culinary so they're going to have two uses in that way especially with things the way they're going now 
Okay, so now I'm gonna move on and just talk a little bit about what's going on in the garden and I'll put a few clips here. There's not much to see, but I did start, I did get my pepper and tomato seeds started. Uh, they're doing pretty good in my south facing window. No added heat, no added artificial light. It's just the light coming in from the window. Even though we live in a pretty dark cloudy place this time of year, we do still get some sun and they're thriving just fine right there. So most of my stuff has germinated. There's a few things I'm still waiting for. They're just the things that typically take longer anyway. A couple of things are new, so I'm not even sure if they're due well, but my arnica has come up. My poppies are coming up. Looking forward to getting those put out in the greenhouse pretty soon and plant it and transplant it into bigger pots it'll probably be a couple more weeks at least before I do that and I'll probably do a video when I get to that point uh, we did get a load of horse manure the other day it might be our, our only load we get this year because it looks like the neighbors up the road aren't aren't keeping horses anymore but the good thing is is the load we got being you know is the last one there it's actually very well composted horse manure the bad thing is that it did have a lot of weeds and stuff in it. So we're having, it's taken a while to get it spread in the garden because I've got to sort through and get all the roots of things that I really don't want in there, like the morning glory and the creeping buttercup. And then since I, it looks like we may only get one load, I'm spreading it in the places that need it most, such as my greenhouse my squash patch is right next to the chicken coop and then around my main area for growing my to tomatillos and my beans but the rest of the main garden areas are going to be fine with the leaves that i've gathered from the neighbors in the fall and spread around there that have been breaking down and just making a real nice soil uh, the grass that i add grass clippings i get either from the neighbors that don't spray or our own grass clippings from either here or the property or whenever we clean out the chicken coop, uh, we throw all that stuff in these areas because these are areas like where we're going to grow potatoes, corn, and things that like a more high acid soil. And, you know, and it's all been breaking down and composting pretty good anyway. So we've never had any issues with it being too hot for our plants. Oh, and then the other thing too is getting my blueberry pots ready. Uh, so when he brought over that load, it also came with a big clump of uh, just straw that was starting to to break down so i took that straw and i took a i always wait until i have something to put on top of the blueberry plants first and that is i put about a cup of blood meal organic blood meal and i do have a video on this i will link to that down below but i'll go ahead and describe it real quick a cup of blood meal then i will top that with some grass clippings or like i did this time with the straw and what that does is it helps keep the dog out of the because the dog likes the blood meal and i don't want him eating it for a couple of reasons and so if i cover that then that's got two purposes it's going to help prevent you know the rain from washing it away but keep it washing down into the pots into the soil of you know to get to the roots of the blueberries so this is a time of the year i like to do that i do try to do it again in the fall i've also been preparing all my empty pots all my pots you know the ones on the side of the greenhouse the ones inside the greenhouse for my peppers my lettuces and the various things i like to grow in pots whether it be outside or inside so that i've been doing that as well yes and, and of course there's just always the garden cleanup i've been digging up some marshmallow roots some of it i've been breaking up and giving it away to locals so they can start their own marshmallow plants and uh yeah that's pretty much it not a whole lot it's been a lot of work but not a whole lot to see quite yet but it's coming along i've been pruning up various things like the grapevines and the blackberry bush I'm trying to keep up on that before they really start growing okay well that's it so i hope you enjoyed my 2020 or more garden up updates will be coming as things start coming along so keep watching for those i'm going to try to be eventually i'll be putting out one a week at least don't forget to check out my herb playlist to learn more details about these herbs and to also do your own research on what's going to grow best for your area and work best for your various health needs all right and get yourself some good herb books i'll leave to a few down below all right thanks for watching take care and god bless